You can take that off, isn't it? Yes. I'll call the case. Petitions number 794 and 742. Major General Zamani Lekot and Barrister Francis Kozan. 794 and 742. Major General Zamani Lekot and Barrister Francis Kozan. Seven nine four and seven four two. Major General Zamani Lekot and Barrister Francis Koza. Petitioners absent. Appearances, please. With profound respect, my lord, Emmanuel Toro, that's uh, my name. I appear for the petitioners. Appearing with me are my learned friends. F. Koza Esquire and Peter Kefas Esquire. May it please the Commission, I appear for the House of Lani Communities. My name is Ibrahim Buba. My learned friend Kennedy Arioro is also appearing with me. I do hope we will be heard, my Lord, before 2 o'clock. May your Lordship be pleased. Honorable members of the Commission, I announce my appearance for the Honorable Commission. My name is Mrs. Chinwe Uwandu. Let's call the register of the Supreme Court. What witness will this be? Sixth witness. My Lord. Sixth witness. Mr. Dodo, please take the witness stand. With profound respect, my Lord, I am just wondering whether he is to produce and testify or merely to produce the documents. Because uh, I'm not too clear why. Uh, just producing documents is subpoena that just taken. I see. Isn't it? I see. Not at testificandum. Not at testificandum. No, that just taken. All right. Mm, he just an anger. He can place them and go away. In which case, he can just place them and go away. In which case, what happens? My Lord, uh, if he's just to produce, I'm wondering if he has to also testify in the circumstance. I don't see the difficulty. Let him give well, and tell us his uh, reason. Very well, my Lord. He Please. was asked to produce the These are the documents. Have you sworn? Finish. Anybody want to cross examine him about yes. the Supreme Court can do so. Go and swear him. <laughs> what are you calling Do you want to swear or not? Yes. It doesn't have to even be or not. Oh, I will hold the microphone. Just take that hand. He doesn't even have to be on oath, my lord, in my humble view. Yes. I, Mukhtar Muhammad Dodo, do solemnly affirm that the evidence I shall give before this honorable commission shall be the truth, the, truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I affirmed. So yes. Please tell this honorable commission your name, address, and occupation. My full name, my lord. Uh, Who is calling him? I think we are calling him. Not you. Okay. You are witness, isn't it? You ask him to come and. We subpoena. I don't want to lead. He is your witness. He's our witness, my lord. Let's well, go on. Yes, my lord. 
Uh, your full name, sir? My full names are Mukhtar Muhammad Dodo. What is your address? My address, official, 3 Arm Complex, Supreme Court of Nigeria, Abuja. And what do you do for a living, sir? I'm a civil servant working in the judiciary. Yes, sir. You were summoned by this honorable commission. Come on, come near the home. Yes. You are not the Chief Justice. I'm the Chief Registrar of the Supreme Very Court good. of Nigeria, my lord. Because the Chief Justice works in the judiciary too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my lord. Thank you, sir. Yeah. You were summoned by this honorable commission to produce a record of proceedings in respect of um, the, the case being, uh, petition being heard by this commission. That is right, yes. Please take a look at this document. Is that the record of proceedings in question? My Lord, uh, these are the records of proceedings, the orders given in that case, the motions filed, and uh, other documents. And uh, Records of proceedings in what case? My Lord, these are records of proceedings in the case of... Uh, In the case of I'm sorry my lord, I have a mix up here. This are a of proceeding in the case of SC Supreme Court case number two thirty stroke ninety-two. General Zamani Lakot retired against judicial tribunal on civil and criminal disturbances during the period 2nd December 92 to date hereof. Council, I thought what they were looking for was record of person in the Okadibo Tribunal. Well, we sent the summons and uh, it was only this morning they produced this, my lord. We thought that we can um, issue a bench warrant for the PEMSEC. What is this we are looking for? To the Cardibo Tribunal. In the Supreme Court case, they couldn't go on because that record was not there. Well, let's see what you have. We we'll tender it first. Well, we apply to put it in evidence. Exhibit for it. This should be four nine. Um, my lord, well, the records by the, by the registrar were requested for by the learned senior advocates. We have the application here, my lord. What have you got there? My lord, there it says application for subpoena Duchess Tecum. 
ad testificandum. Please issue or cause to be issued. Subpoena Duchess Tecum ad testificandum, compelling M.M. Dodo, the Chief Registrar of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, Abuja, to attend the Commission on the next hearing date of the above matter and on any, on any subsequent adjournments thereof to testify and bring along for the purpose of tendering in evidence the originals or duly certified true copies of the following documents, namely, all applications filed in the Supreme Court in appeal number SC 230-92, Major General Zaman in Court, and Judicial Tribunal on Civil and Criminal Communal Disturbances during the period 2-12-92 to the date hereof. Two, the notice of appeal and briefs of argument filed in the said suit during the same period. Three, all letters addressed to the Honorable Chief Justice of Nigeria and to the Chief Registrar of the Supreme Court of Nigeria during the aforementioned period. Four, office copies of all replies to the said letters written by the Chief Justice of Nigeria and the Chief Registrar of the Supreme Court of Nigeria to any of the parties in the said appeal during the aforesaid period. Amala, we believe that's what he came along with. What did we ask the permanent secretary to produce? This one? Permanent secretary cannot produce court records. It was a record of a Cardibo Tribunal of Inquiry they are looking for. That's what they are looking for. And there's evidence they have been looking for it since 1993. That's correct, my lord. Almost 10 years. And they cannot go on with the case in the Supreme Court because of the absence of that record. That's why the Supreme Court said the application is incompetent. Then you tell us we got the record. We thought we've got the record. Thank you very much. Do anybody want to cross examine him? Go back and do your work then. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Mr. Chairman and the honorable members. Uh, I'd like to still register our unflinching support to this honorable commission that the Supreme Court is law-abiding and we shall continue to be law-abiding to this humble commission. We shall make ourselves available at any moment we are asked to come. I thank your lordships. Dodo, I think uh, they want you. I think uh, we just need to clarify one point because the fault obviously is, is if there is, it's not from him, it's from us. If there may have been a misrepresentation of what we are looking for, can we confirm from him that, okay, thank you, this is, we thank you for what we've received, but this is not what we're looking for. Do, do you have the, the other records of the. A lot, that there's no ambiguity in the summons we received. It is in clear terms. What we are expected to bring is what we brought. Exactly. If there's any someone to bring any other one, I assure you the Honorable Commission that our records are intact. Ah, we shall, so we shall oblige. That, that's why I think I didn't want you to start going away. Now that you complied with what we wanted, could we, why don't we simply ask uh, our, our legal team to liaise with you um, and then maybe we can step the case down while the matter has been sorted out with the hope that uh, you know we can still get it sorted out le much later in the day. As it pleases, your okay, Worship. So, with profound respect, my lords, the records of the Okadibo Tribunal have been subpoenaed from an entirely different department of government so that they are brought before this uh, Honorable Commission. Certainly not from the Supreme Court. They are somewhere within the relevant uh, offices of the federal government. And the effort is to cause them to bring them here to this commission. The matter before the Supreme Court, as my Lord has rightly observed, was frustrated because those records were not made available despite persistent efforts. So, well, these are no doubt no ordinary records from what is clear now because it shouldn't take us nine years to look for records. So, obviously, they are very precious records for all kinds of reasons as to why they are not available, in which case we must not foreclose other possibilities. I mean, looking for them in the Supreme Court, 
and looking for them in the relevant government uh, agencies. That's still one way. So what I'm saying is since we have him here, um, we can go on. But still, because I think there, were, there, were, there was some, the, palm sec for, from the, for the permanent secretary cabinet office was here this morning. He was here this morning, sir. He's, uh, the legal advisor was also well, here. Well, when you told us to go the record, we asked him to go. I don't know you haven't got the record. My Lord, uh, I spoke with the legal advisor. You got advisor. him again. Let him come. If possible, with a subpoena or a uh, warrant. My Lord, I spoke with the legal advisor this morning. She was also here. And it's still the same story. They said they can't find the records anyway. So that's why we are looking at If you one. can't find the record, why tell us that he has brought the record? What record has he brought? Because they were only brought the one you cannot and, find. And we didn't... I apologize, uh, my lords and members oh, of the commission. One of your people to go and get him. Yes. Let him come here and say that he cannot find the record. Uh, one of your lawyers, go there and get him, if you like, with a warrant. Yes, my lord. I'm so sorry. Part of this is my fault. We also asked for exchange of correspondence between the registry and and uh, the tribal. They must that, have that has been tendered this year now. All the things we've done in the Supreme Court, your letters, they're all here. Yes. What is not here is a Cardigo tribunal record. I see, okay. The firm said came and we were told the records are here. We asked him to go. So send one of your lawyers to tell him that we still want him. I think we need Mr. Dodo again, because the record cannot be in the Supreme Court unless somebody <laughs> sent it there. Uh, it cannot be in the Supreme Court. All right. Is the record in the Supreme Court or the World Tribunal? Uh, my Lord, uh, this record I brought, I had a notice to bring it. If I'm now put on notice, I uh, will I will oblige straight away. All right. Can you give him the details of the record you're looking for? Then let him go and have a search. May it please your lordships. The, the record that we now want of the Accredible Tribunal cannot be in the Supreme Court. They are not. The exchange of correspondence which we exhibited between Madaki and the Attorney General's office show clearly that the Attorney General said that they are with the Secretary to the Tribunal. And then later it was said they were transferred to the Cabinet Office. It has nothing to do with the Supreme Court. And we are not asking the Supreme Court to produce what we know must be in the Cabinet Office. Excuse me. Yes. That letter, document you are looking for, must have been sent from somewhere. Where was it sent from? Because a copy should be there. Apart from this uh, Cabinet Office we are looking uh, at, and we can't find it. No, what? Where? Where? Where was it sent from? Let us try that avenue. The, the, what we requested was the proceedings and judgment of the Okadigo Tribunal. Agreed. When we addressed a letter to the, when they refused to produce it, we addressed a letter to the Attorney General of the Federation. Mm -hmm. He then wrote a letter, you have all the exchange in the appendix, to the Secretary to produce it and wrote to us that this, the Secretary will certainly produce it to us. Then later we were told that since the tribunal was disbanded, all those papers had gone to the cabinet office. All of them? All of them. This is a matter relating to tribunals of inquiry. And all the papers are usually kept by the permanent secretary political in cabinet office, from, at least from my own uh, experience of these matters. So it is he who has it, not the Supreme Court. I think we discharged Mr. Dudu because from what uh, I said and from what uh, Chief Fajah has said, the record cannot be in the Supreme Court. No need asking him to go and search. It will be a futile search. They are not there. Uh, well, my, my Lord, before the witnesses, I don't know if my learned senior is saying that he did not ask for this or whether he doesn't need it anymore because it was on the basis of his request that we summoned Mr. Dudu yesterday so that we know exactly where we are heading. Because this was requested in addition to the other record. No, no, no. It was only yesterday we issued Mr. Dodo with the summons 
and uh, by about eight o'clock this morning early this morning he was here yes. so we didn't even have the opportunity of, of going through with him this was given to us yesterday and we we duly summoned him and he produced what was in his custody and if i heard him right he oh, also was some time on things that are immaterial everything from the spring court doesn't help if you are asked to summon him it's wrong and we have already been going to the cabinet office for two weeks exactly looking for these records why did we do that if we knew they were in the spring court at a stage last week, we told us before we arrive, the record will be here. They are searching for it. Well, it was based on the request of le my learned senior. The letter is here. I don't say it's based on your own search. It's what they told you, and you told us. Now, a week after, the records are not yet here. And uh, learned uh, Crown Council or something disappeared. We will not see him again. Uh -huh. Now, let's have this uh, PEMSEC. He may share some light on what is happening. Yes. All right. Have you sent somebody for him? Mr. Kaka will go for him. That's a telephone. You can phone. All right. Thank you very much. Much obliged, my lords and my learned senior counsels. While we wait for the record, I've told you before you came in that our tenancy of this place will expire at 2 today. If we stay one minute after 2, we pay. I don't know whether it's weekly or monthly. <laughs> the Women's Center for Women's Development will take into account the, uh, the special situation and I'm sure that the women members of the They have been privatized and they're right. looking for money. I see, okay. So, no, yes. So, we, we are endeavoring, we have tried to... Uh, let's see, we give how many cases? We give you one hour, give you one hour. Anything we cannot finish today, submit in writing. We will accept them as proved. I was just looking at the law. We can really go on with written documents. We don't necessarily need to hear oral. The law doesn't, the law contains something, section 3, oath of members. Nowhere do we see oath of witnesses. So that they can come here and sit down. They call it a meeting. meeting. If you look at section 5, meeting of the. Mm -hmm. Power to summon any person in Nigeria to attend any meeting of the tribunal. Meeting. Uh, you said that it's a different scenario from what happens in court. So we'll accept anything you're right. Right, okay. Uh, that's why I say these long examinations are really to no effect. Yes. Because you state what you, are, what you are talking about, what your own claim is. He states, we look at both. Yes. We make up our mind. Since we are not giving a judgment, yes. so cross admission is just a luxury. Yeah. And if you just, when you cross examine, we just relax and look at you people cross examining. You think it's a court. It's not a court. Yes. Well, so one hour, then he has one hour and we conclude. Then in your case, one hour, they have one hour, that gives us about four hours. Then that's the end of the session. My Lord, if I may be understood, is my Lord saying after the petitioners have called five witnesses and have testified, we should not call anything any you want to do, write them. We will accept them as proved. I give you that assurance. It will be accepted as proved. It's not a court of law. We, we do not appreciate your case. My Lord, we do appreciate this is not a court of we law. We are wasting too much time. When it reaches your time and you can't yes. conclude in one hour, then we look at that. Don't start crossing a bridge without reaching that bridge first. My Lord, this bridge got to one hour, Mr. Mr. Uh, Chief I just start, please.
No, we did something we did this morning. You are still on your oath. Time is 20 to 12. You have 20 to 1. Right. You, you had come to the, yes. the first trial that you had. Now, when that trial commenced, the 12 witnesses gave evidence on behalf of the prosecution. Correct. Right. And the prosecution closed their case. Correct. Now, what happened after that? After they closed their case, we started our defense. You started your defense. Yes. Who, with whom did you start your defense? I was the first accused. You were the first, and you, you, and you were the first defense witness. Yes, my lord. You gave evidence and you were cross-examined. Yes, my lord. Right. Now, how many witnesses in all had given evidence for the defense? Nine. Nine witnesses had given evidence for the defense. Yes, my lord. Yes. And at that stage, um, what happened? At that stage, the Attorney General of the Federation suddenly applied a nolly prosky, terminating the case. On that basis, we were discharged, but were immediately rearrested without a warrant and without reason, yes. and taken to the Kaduna prison. Right. Okay. Um, was when you when, before you were discharged, did the lawyers uh, say anything about what should be done, whether you should be discharged or discharged and acquitted? Yes, my lord. Our lawyers made the point to the tribunal that in view of the fact that the prosecution had concluded their case and we were successfully carrying out our own, what was logically left was for the case to be concluded. But instead, they terminated the case and rearrested us. Your lawyers maintained that since so much evidence had been given on both sides, yes, my lord, if the prosecution was withdrawing, what should be done was to discharge and acquit us. To be discharged and acquitted, yes, my lord, and that the prosecution be not given another opportunity to restart the case again and bring other witnesses on the same facts, right. yes, my lord, and the tribunal ruled against us, ruled against you. And so what happened? Yes, I have already stated we were rearrested, rearrested and taken to the Kaduna prison. Right. Now, look at this bundle of documents. It is a motion on notice filed before the Kaduna High Court. But it contains the record of proceedings of the first trial from beginning to end, with all the witnesses who gave evidence. Have a look at it. Yes, my lord, is the one. I seek to tender it, my lord. Market 50, at the 50. Yes. And the proceedings of the tribunal.
concluded their case, and we were successfully carrying out our own, what was logically left was for the case to be concluded. But instead, they terminated the case and rearrested us. Yes. That since so much evidence had been given on both sides, yes, my lord. If the prosecution was withdrawing, what should be done was to discharge was to be, and acquit us. To be discharged and acquitted. Yes, my lord. And that the prosecution be not given another opportunity to restart the case again and bring other witnesses. The tribunal ruled against us. Ruled against you. And so, what happened? Yes, I have already stated we were rearrested re re and taken to the Kaduna prison. Right. Now, look at this bundle of documents. It is a motion on notice filed before the Kaduna High Court, but it contains the record of proceedings of the first trial from beginning to end with all the witnesses who gave evidence. Have a look at it. Yes, my lord, is the one. I seek to tender it, my lord. Market 50, Edward 50. Yes. And the proceedings of the tribunal, the actual trial, commences at page 19, does it not, of the, of that record exhibit? Uh, from pages 19 to 58. And I don't want to interrupt, but are we a court of appeal? No, 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 no. Well, yeah, yeah. what all this meant to be? No. We this... cannot vary what uh, the judge who conducted the trial. We can't no. annul it. Yes. What are we being asked to do? We, what your, your commission has been asked to do is to note that what happened in this case after a first trial had virtually been completed, with the defense witness giving evidence, the government now discontinues that case and then starts. We I'm can not, gather all this from the records. We can gather all these from the records. Yes, I'm just, yes. His that, evidence doesn't add or subtract no. from the records. Yes, but we will help you. That's why I'm just directing your attention to where that record is in the bond. I gave your lordship a large bundle. Oh, thank you very much, but yes. we can read it too. Right, okay. We can read I, it. I, yes, I'm just trying to show where to read and what to read, sir. Um, that is all. I, I don't want my, your time wasted. I don't want mine wasted also, but I should direct your attention to what happened. In your address, yes. yes. In your address, yes. you quote the relevant pages. In the address, I accept that one, but not from the witness. My Lord, you, your, your courts have decided that if we bring a bundle of documents to any court, we must refer to specific sections of it upon which we want to rely. In the address. Uh, yes. Your, your logic, please, yes. Now, so, where's that my bottle? So after that uh, trial, the second trial was, uh, re was started. Yes, my Lord. Right. The... The accused persons were more or less the same. Yes, my lord. Right. And the charges which are shown on that exhibit 
relate to the same set of facts. Yes, my lord. But you are now charged with culpable homicide. Homicide, yes, my lord. Right. So what you then did, what your lawyers did, then you applied to the Cardinal State High Court for leave to grant us the opportunity to enforce our fundamental rights. Yes, that the second trial, amongst other things, amounted to an infringement of On our your fundamental rights. rights. Yes, my lord. Is that true? Yes. Right. So the Cardinal State High Court granted you leave to enforce that right. Right. Holding that you had made a prima facie case. Correct. Right. Then did they, did the judge grant is then you asked for a stay of the proceedings of a cardinal tribunal until your rights were determined. Correct. So that damage is not done. Yes, okay. Did the court agree to that to grant that They grant? refused. Right. So what did you do? We went to the Court of Appeal, Federal Court of Appeal, to pursue that right also. Right. And when you go to the Court of Appeal, the government, Federal Government, raised the preliminary objection. Yes, my Lord. That the courts have no jurisdiction to the intervene. The jurisdiction of the courts have been ousted by a decree. And the High Court had no jurisdiction to hear your petition. Yes, my Lord. Right. And then the Court of Appeal, by a majority of two to one, agreed with the with government the position. Government position. And there was a dissenting judgment. Correct, my lord. Right. Now, so you appealed against that decision. Now, where, where is that uh, copy? I've already admitted this exhibit 51. That is a court of appeal records. Court of appeal records. Exhibit 51. Yes. But this time, the, I've admitted it already. Yes. Is, is the judgment of, uh, is the judgment, the dissenting judgment that I want to refer to? I don't think it is part of it. It's 652. Both. Right. Now, look at page 19 of Exhibit 52. Uh, pages, you on pages 18? 18 and 19. Yes, my lord. Of the judgment of. Akpabio. Yes, my lord. JCA. Yes, my lord. Now, briefly, read to his lord. Tag that 52. Tag it if it's from the same. If it's the same with Exodus 51. Mark the page, relevant page, Exodus 52. You have it. You have Exodus 52. Here, here is a copy, sir. Uh -huh. Yes. That 52, 52 then. is the judgment of a Pabio. Page, give me another copy. Give me another. 18. Page 18. The, there, Judge Akpabio was reviewing the arguments on jurisdiction of the courts, courts. having regard to the outstar clauses of the decree. Of, the, of decree number one of 1984. Yes, sir. Now, yes, can you read it just very briefly? Give me another copy. I have carefully considered the above arguments of learned senior advocates on both sides and have, I must say, that the provision of Section 5 of the revised edition laws of the Federation of Nigeria, decree number 1990, otherwise Decree number 21 of 1990, already reproduced above, has brought a new complexion into the whole case. I must state quite frankly that before our attention was drawn to that action of the law, section of the law, I beg your pardon, I was of the view that the cross appeal could succeed under cap 137, while it could have failed under cap 53. That was because from the wordings of CAP 5.3, already reproduced supra, it was only things done by the tribunal under the act that could not be inquired into. Whereas things done by the head of state in, section, in setting up the tribunal could be inquired into. In other words, 
while the fourth the courts should not question the validity of any judgment verdict sentence or any other thing done by the tribunal it nevertheless could inquire into whether the tribunal was properly constituted under the law that gave its existence to that extent the submission of the cross appellants under cap 53 of the laws could have failed but i had held that the submission under cap 137 could have succeeded as section 1 sub 2b of the said act had precluded the courts from even inquiring into the validity of the decree, let alone anything done under it. But Section 5 of the new Decree 21 noted above has completely wiped out all ouster clauses in any act embodied in the 1990 volume of the laws of the Federation. I am sure that this provision of Section 5 of Decree 21 of 1990 took everyone by surprise. Mr. Okolo, the learned senior advocate for the respondents, had no answer to it. The position, therefore, is that as of now, the 1979 Correction Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is supreme. No previous decrees embodied in the 1990 volumes of the laws can claim to be superior to it. So the submission of the respondents under the above issue cannot stand and shall be dismissed. I hold therefore that since the application of the applicants was brought at the Kaduna High Court after the promulgation of the new laws of Nigeria 1990, the said High Court had jurisdiction to have, to have entertained the matter. All previous court decisions that gave supremacy to pre-1990 decrees of the federal military government are no longer valid after 1990. Now, so that was the minority judgment. The majority said the courts had no jurisdiction. Yes, my lord. So you appealed to the Supreme Court. To intervene. Yes. And you filed a notice of appeal? Yes, my lord. Contending that a published decision, just a published decision was correct. Was the correct one. Yes, my lord. Right. Now, in whilst that ap application was pending, that appeal was pending, you applied for stay of proceedings of the Okadibo Tribunal pending the determination of the appeal. At the Supreme Court. Yes, my At lord. The Supreme Court. Did the Supreme Court, that was in December 1992. Yes, my lord. Did the Supreme Court list the application for They state? didn't list it. I see. So that in, in December or January, Okadibo resumed the second trial. Correct. Right. Now, tell, then, you know about decree number 55. Yes, my lord. Of 1992. Yes, my lord. Right. So... That decree was then passed to nullify the arguments in Justice Akpabio's judgment. Correct. Because it said that all those decrees which had become acts of parliament should now revert, revert to decrees. Correct. And it was backdated to 1983. 1983 so that it would cover in order to catch us. The, the argument that we are going to... Yes, my lord. I, I, this is an appeal. Yes, my lord. Now, so then what happened in the Okadibo Tribunal? At the Okadibo Tribunal, seeing that decree being promulgated and the implications, our lawyers saw the whole thing as a charade and futile, and therefore refused to be used as tools to deal with innocent people, and so they withdrew. Yes, okay. So what did the, the tribunal then do? The tribunal then asked us our, our next course of action. Yes. 
and uh, or correction. Yes, they ask us our next course of action. We requested for a day bail in order to hire other lawyers. Bail for one day? Yes, sir. To find other lawyers, yes? He clearly told us that only the government in Abuja could grant bail. Yes. Instead, he offered us a lawyer from the floor, whom we didn't know. Yes. And of course, considering all that had happened since the trial started, including his hostility towards our lawyers and towards us, we knew that it was a plot by the government that was using Okadibo as a tool yes. to do us in. So we declined. Yes. So what happened? When we declined, he then asked me, the first accused, to defend myself. As I said in my addendum, he couldn't answer my question as to what the implication was. At the end of the day, he told us in open court that whether or not we defended ourselves, he was going to use the case of the prosecution, quoting some section 353 of CPC as his authority to pass judgment. And that was what happened. That's it. Uh, did you say anything about the um, no case submission? Oh yes, he also said so. That our demand for a day's bail to hire other lawyers amounted to no case submission with particular reference to our refusal to accept his lawyer, which we saw as a Trojan horse in our camp. Yes. Okay, did any one of you then give evidence or participate in that? Nobody action? else gave any evidence. Yes, in my syndicate, there were two elder native people, Marcos Mamang and Yohan, Yonana Karo. Yes. They speak no English up till now. Yes. Everything, including the judgment, were done in English. Yes. Including their own, the sentence, sentences passed on them. Right, okay. So that then on the 3rd of February, 1993, they read their judgment. Correct. Right. And with the exception of the second accused, accused all the other six of us were condemned to, be de to death by hanging. Yes. Now, so you then applied to the Supreme Court to set aside all the proceedings of, of the tribunal the, of the tribunal yes, from the moment they were served with the motion for stay of proceedings correct until the day of judgment yes my lord did the supreme court list that motion for hearing as in the first case they refused right okay as a matter of fact the first motion for stay of proceedings motion on notice motion expert filed in december 1992 was in fact a hearing notice for it was issued only on the 2nd of June, 1993. Correct, my lord. Right. And this was what was then served, it was then served on your on the council. Yes, my lord. At that uh, time. Now, was that, uh, was that application even hard on that uh, June? It wasn't, my lord. Right. So, the, in the meantime, do you know of the Constitutional Rights Project? Yes, my lord. Now. An MGO. Right. A non-governmental organization, Constitutional Rights Project, had in the meantime, in February 1993, laid a complaint on your behalf to the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. Yes, my lord. Against the violation of your fundamental human rights. Yes, my lord. The eventually, where's your copy? I don't want the original. Eventually, give me a copy. The commission issued, held a hearing Yes, my lord. At which the federal government, although served, refused did not, to, did refused not appear. To answer. Yes, sir. You eventually applied through your lawyers for, I don't want to use the original. A copy of the proceedings. For a copy of the proceedings and judgment of the 
African Commission. Yes, my lord. Have you got it, have you got it there? Have you got a copy yes, my of, lord. The, of their reply? I have a copy right here. Sending the certified true copy. Yes, my lord. As well as the uh, the letter and the certified true copy. Yes, my lord. Right. Uh, will you produce it with your permission? I already have circulated a copy. Exit uh, 53. I'm much obliged. Yes, now, my lord. Yes, I want you to read, first of all, the letter. Sorry. Yes, my lord. Yes, we use it. If I may be permitted to keep the original, we might want to use it for other things. We have the original here, it can be cited. But these are photocopies. It's all right. I'm much obliged. You admit newspapers, how much more? <laughs> African Commission on Human and People's Rights, Kairaba Avenue, P.O. Box 673, Banjul, The Gambia. The letter is dated 11th October 1999, addressed, of course, to Chief G.O.K. Ajay. Subject, gross violation of human rights in Zangon Katak. Dear Chief Ajay, I have the honor to acknowledge the receipt of your letter of 9th September 1999 on the above issue. Unfortunately, by our records, we are yet to receive your fax of 24th August 1999. Enclosed, please find a certified true copy of the Commission's decision on communication number 87 stroke 93, the Constitutional Rights Project in respect of Zamani Leokwot and six others versus Nigeria as requested. I believe it will be useful in the presentation of your client's case before the Human Rights Violations Investigation Panel. Yours sincerely, signed Jamen Bacheko, Secretary to the Commission. And here is the judgment. 87 stroke 93, Constitutional Rights Project in respect of Zamani Leopold and six others, Nigeria. Article 56.5. Why remedies are discretionary, extraordinary, and non-judicial, it would be improper to insist on their being exhausted. Article 7, Section 1A, the foreclose, correction, to foreclose any avenue of appeal to national courts violates this article. Article 7, Sub 1C, Harassment of counsel such that they were forced to withdraw and the subsequent proceeding of the case against the accused without defense violates this right. Section 7, subsection 1D. The composition of a tribunal of members of the armed forces creates the appearance, if not actual, lack of impartiality. And finally, Article 26 tribunals which fail to operate independently of the executive mean the government has failed in its duty to provide the necessary structures. And this was what happened. Facts. Communication 87 stroke 93 was brought on behalf of seven men. Zamani Lekwad, James Atomic Kudo, Kude, Yunana Karo Kibori, Marcus Mamang, Yahaya Dunia, Julia Serkiza Mandebo, and Ilya Maza. Sentenced to death under the Civil Disturb Disturbances Special Tribunal, Decree No. 2 of 1987 from Nigeria. This decree does not provide for any judicial appeal against the decisions of the special tribunals and prohibits the courts from reviewing any aspect of the operation of the tribunal. The communication also alleges that the accused and their counsel were constantly harassed and intimidated during the trial, ultimately forcing the withdrawal of the defense counsel. Despite the lack of defense, the tribunal condemned the accused to death for culpable homicide, unlawful assembly, and breach of the peace. 
the communication argues that the prohibition on judicial review of the special tribunals and lack of judicial appeals for judgments of these tribunals violates the right to an appeal to competent national organs against acts violating fundamental rights guaranteed by Article 7, Paragraph 1, Subsection A of the African Charter. The communication complains that the conduct of the trials before these tribunals, including harassment of the Defense Council and deprivation of Defense Council, violated the right to be defended by counsel of one's choice, guaranteed by Article 7, Paragraph 1C. The communication finally complains that the practice of setting up special tribunals composed of members of the armed forces and the police, in addition to judges, violates the right to be tried by an impartial tribunal guaranteed by Article 7, Paragraph 1D. Procedure. The communication is dated 4th February 1993 and was sent with copies of the relevant legislation. On 6 February 1993, an appeal for urgent action in the case and a copy of the communication was sent to the chairman of the commission. On 12 February 1993, the complainant wrote to Commissioner Umuzurike requesting him to take interim measures. On 16 February 1993, the Commission wrote to the Attorney General of Nigeria with an appeal under Rule 109 in the Revised Rules of Procedure, Rule 111 of the Rules of Procedure, asking that steps be taken to prevent irreparable prejudice. On 25 February 1993, the Attorney General responded in a letter dated 25 February 1993, stating that the state was not in violation of the Charter. He stated that the persons had been given a fair trial and sentenced to death. Provisions had been made, however, that they be moved from death cells to ordinary ones after examination of the case by the National Defense Council. The accused persons were said to be receiving fair treatment, which was a shameful lie. At the 13th session held in March, stroke April 93 in Banjul, the Gambia, the Commission decided to bring the communication to the notice of the state concern. This was done by the Secretariat of the Commission on 12 April 1993. On 12 August 1993, a reminder was sent by the Secretariat of the Commission to the government that if no routine response was received in two months, the case would be considered by the Commission. At the 14th session held in December, 1993 in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, the communication was declared admissible. On 12, 20th January, a correction, 1994, another reminder was sent by the Secretariat to the Commission to the State of Nigeria. At the 15th session held in April, 1994 in Banjul, the Gambia, the Commission decided to inform the government and the complainants of the dates of the next session, where the communication would be de decided on the merits. On 29 July 1994, another notification was sent by the Secretariat of the Commission to the effect that if there was no routine response before the next ordinary session, the communication would be considered on the merits. 13 minutes, regardless. Gone. All oh, these things reading, we all know them.
We all know them. We can read them too. We're wasting his precious time by reading what we can also read. It is important to us that this whole country should hear and know what the African Commission decided relevant to this issue. And I think it's most relevant to your deliberations. You know, that was you addressing the whole country, not us. No, I'm a, no, my lord. Because we know it. Those who come here to give evidence mm -hmm. are not only telling your lordship to remember. I see. The they are telling the whole if, country. If you are the whole country, it's all right. Yes, sir. So but we are also know, telling the whole the country. The law of Lagos, the International Commission of Jurists yes. said, I think the law of Lagos, nobody should be convicted and executed on the verdict of one court. That's why in Kinsera, who has case, they said Nigeria committed judicial murder. Yes. Yes, we know all that. Yes. Maybe you said the whole country, oh, let them hear. Yes, the whole country must know. Yes. On 29 July 94, another notification was sent by the Secretariat of the Commission to the effect that if there was no routine, oh yes, I have read that, I beg your pardon, 17. On 25th August 94, the Secretariat of the Commission wrote to the complainant to inform that at the 16th session, the communication would be considered on the merits. Furthermore, the complainant was asked to supply any further information available concerning the communication. The commission notes that both parties were given notices of hearing, but neither appeared to present his case at the 16th session held in October, November 94 in Banjul, the Gambia. The commission was therefore forced to decide the communication on the routine submission alone. Law. The case was declared admissible at the 14th session of the Commission on the following grounds. Article 56 of the African Charter reads as follows, quote, communications shall be considered if they are sent after exhausting local remedies, if any, unless it is obvious that this procedure is unduly prolonged, unquote. The case raises the question of whether the remedies available are of a nature that require exhaustion. The Act complained of in Communication 87 stroke 93 is the Civil Dis Disturbances Special Tribunal Act, in which Part 4, Section 8, 1 provides, and I quote, the validity of any decision, sentence, judgment, or order given or made, or any other thing whatsoever done under this Act shall not be inquired into in any court of law." Unquote. The Civil Disturbances Act empowers the Armed Forces Ruling Council to confirm the penalties of the tribunal. This power is a discretionary extraordinary remedy of a non-judicial nature. The object of the remedy is to obtain a favor and not to vindicate a right. It would be improper to insist on the complainant seeking remedies from a source which does not operate impartially and has no obligation to decide according to legal principles. The remedy is neither adequate nor effective. Therefore, the Commission is of the opinion that the remedy available is not of a nature that requires exhaustion according to Article 56, Paragraph 5 of the African Charter. The case was thus declared admissible. The merits. Article 7 of the African Charter reads, quote, every individual shall have the right to have his cause heard. This comprises A, the right to an appeal to competent national organs against acts violating his fundamental rights. C, the right to defense. D, the right to be tried within a reasonable time by an impartial tribunal, which was not in our case. As cited above, the Civil Disturbances Act provides, and I quote, 
the validity of any decision, sentence, judgment, or order given or made, or any other thing whatsoever done under this act shall not be inquired into any court of law. Unquote. A decision, sentence, judgment, order given or made, or any other thing whatsoever done under the Civil Disturbances Act may certainly constitute an act violating fundamental rights, as described in Article 7, subsection 1A of the Charter. In this case, the fundamental rights in question are those to life and liberty provided for in Articles 4 and 6 of the African Charter, which explains why we are here. While punishments decreed as the culmination of a carefully conducted criminal procedure do not necessarily constitute violations of these rights, to foreclose any avenue of appeal to competent national organs in criminal cases bearing such penalties clearly violates Article 7, subsection 1A of the African Charter and increases the risk that even severe violations may go and redress. The communication alleges that during the trials, the defense counsel for the complainants was harassed and intimidated to the extent of being forced to withdraw from the proceedings. In spite of this forced withdrawal of counsel, the tribunal proceeded to give judgment in the matter, finally sentencing the accused to death. The commission finds that defendants were deprived of their right to defense, including the right to be defended by counsel of their choice. A violation of Article 7, subsection 1C, as cited above. The Civil Disturbances Special Tribunal Act Part 2, Section 2, subsection 2, says that the tribunal shall be appointed by the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces and consist of one judge and four other members one of whom shall belong to the armed forces. As such, the tribunal may be composed of persons belonging largely to the executive branch of government, the same branch that passed the Civil Disturbances Act. And that is why we are complaining. If it is not corrected, many more people in future will suffer from it. Article 7, subsection 1D of the African Charter requires the Court of Tribunal correction, the court or tribunal to be impartial. Regardless of the character of the individual members of such tribunals, its composition alone creates the appearance, if not lack, of impartiality. It thus violates Article 7, subsection 1D. Article 26 of the Charter reads, and I quote, states, parties to the Charter shall have the duty to guarantee the independence of the courts, which was not done here. The right to the individual in Article 7 must be met by the duty of the government to provide the structures to enable the right to be exercised by failing to provide courts which operate independently of the executive. The government of Nigeria has violated Article 26, despite the fact that we signed this charter. For the above reasons, the Commission declares that there has been a violation of Article 7 subsections 1A, C, and D, and 26 of the African Charter, and recommends that the government of Nigeria should free the complainants. Taken at the 16th session, Banjul de Gambia, October 1994. Signed. My Lord, from what we have heard, it's clear that the African Commission on Human Rights is superior to all Supreme Courts in Africa, just like the European Commission. Therefore, this judgment is binding to the government of the Fair Republic of Nigeria, is binding to the Supreme Court of Nigeria and its subsidiary agencies. And with due respect, my Lord, is binding to this commission. So we demand that you make a proper Are you reading or pontificating? <laughs> That's a good word. <laughs>
Well, why did you become the chief justice of Nigeria? <laughs> Sorry about that, my lord. Now, I got carried away. Now, this uh, decision was made in, uh, was given in October 1994. Yes, my lord. Now, the provisions of the law under which you have been tried requires that the decision of the tribunal is subject, was subject to confirmation by the Armed Forces Ruling Council, which was then called. Yes, my lord. Right. Now, We know that this, my lord, the members of the commission, this is the appropriate time to put in. Oh, go on, but uh, I feel I'm mute because we have already decided in the Supreme Court that that confirmation does not amount to an appeal. Yes, I know, I know. Uh -huh, no. no, that's not the point. I've left that point. I'm, I'm going to something else. The, the point I was going to make now that uh, I said this would have been the appropriate time to tender the proceedings the proceedings before the of the, of the um, uh, National Defense, Defense and Council. Security Council as it had become at that time. So, have you got them? Uh, no, we have uh, something that appears a copy, it's not completely which doesn't appear to be a copy, which was somebody just dropped it in his own office, but we have something here. I'll tender it. Yes, we'll tender it. Now, some time ago, uh, do you, you came across or you saw a, a document which is uh, headed property of the National Defense and Security Council as Annex A? Yes, my lord. Somebody passed it to me. Yes, somebody passed it to you. It, and it's, it relates to the consideration of that council. Yes, my lord. Of, your, of the judgment given by Akadigo. I seek to attend that, my lord. Exhibit 54. Yes. What is the date of that, of that document? That document is dated 14th June 1993. 14th June 1993. 93, yes, my lord. Right, okay. And uh, what is it supposed to do? What is it supposed to be? Read the heading. Well, the heading here is National Defense and Security Council confirmation of the judgments of the judicial tribunals on civil and communal disturbances at Zangon Katap, Kaduna State. Yes. Memorandum by the President, yes. Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yes, okay. Yes, sir. what does it do? Well, it has gone there to uh, say many things. And then in Bureau, the punishments were awarded, reducing the sentences. All right, no, no, you start, start from the beginning. What, what does it say there? So let's start. We all know what it is. The government have been trying to hide it, so what better know? Uh, you want me to read it, my Yes, Lord? yes. The purpose of this memorandum is to present to counsel for confirmation or otherwise the report and judgments of the two judicial tribunals on civil and communal disturbances in Zangun Kataf, Kaduna State, under the chairmanships of Honorable Justice B.O. Okadibo and Emmanuel Adegwite. Following the civil and communal disturbances at Zangun Kataf, Kaduna State on 15th to 16th May 92, during which widespread destruction was inflicted on lives and property, the government set up two tribunals under section 2, 1, and 2 of the Civil Disturbances Special Tribunals Decree Number 2 of 87 as amended to try persons involved in the disturbances. The first tribunal comprising six members was headed by Justice Okadibo, while the second tribunal consisting of seven members had Mr. Emmanuel Adeguite as chairman. The two tribunals have completed their assignments and submitted their reports and judgments attached to this memorandum as 
annexes 1 to 12. The Okadibo Tribunal tried 23 suspects under six different groups, while Justice Adegute Tribunal tried 30 persons under six different groups. The suspects were charged with offenses ranging from one culpable homicide punishable under section 221B of the penal code, two abetment punishable under section C5 of the penal code, penal code law three, unlawful assembly punishable under section 102 of the penal code, four rioting punishable under section 106 of the penal code, five rioting armed with deadly weapons punishable under section 107 of the penal code. Six, disturbance of the public peace punishable under section three of the penal code. Seven, theft punishable under section 286 of the penal code. Eight, criminal trespass punishable under section 348 of the penal code. And six, conspiracy punishable under section 92 correction. 97 subsection 2 of the penal code and 10 mischief by fire punishable under section 337 of the penal code law. All the accused pleaded not guilty to the charges. The prosecution called 8 to 17 witnesses in the charges before the first tribunal, while the second tribunal had between 8 to 18 witnesses called by the prosecution in support of the charges. The summary of the trial and judgments are presented here under in two paragraphs, A and B. And he went further to uh, Ten Adamus minutes Shakari, more. Kaza, etc. How many? Oh, ten minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So most of the sentences were reduced in ink. Council may wish to note that the defense counsels to the acute persons, Chief Jyoki Ajayi, SAN, Emmanuel Toro, Esquire, withdrew their legal, advice, uh, legal services to the accused persons at the very crucial stage in the proceedings. When the prosecution closed its case and the tribunal then, the tribunal had to adjourn proceedings for about two weeks for the defense counsel to open their defense of the accused persons. The withdrawal was on the ground that decree number 55 of 1992 had denied the accused persons their right of appeal to the higher court. They refused to be persuaded to continue. The tribunal then informed the accused persons of their rights under sections 106 and 19 Correction 191, subsection 1 of the Criminal Procedure Code. Now, now can we stop there for a moment? Yes, I sir. want you now to go look at page 4. Page 4. Yes. That's from page 4, halfway down. To go back. Deals, yes, go back. It yes, deals sir. with the those who are tried along with you, yourself and those who are tried along with you. Yes, yes, my lord. And the decision of the National Defense and Security Council on, on the relation to the sentences passed yes, my uh, Lord. on you. So if you look at that item four, annex, item six, item annex six. Annex six. You see it there, page four. Page four. It's, it's not very clear in my copy. Yes, okay. The problem I have with the reading is that it's not clear. That yes. was why, my Lord, we requested for the original, yes, okay. which the government has refused to, to right. provide. Okay. Now, so the one in relation to you was not clear. Then yes, if you Lord. look at page, page five. Page five, yes, my Lord. That one deals with some, the next person, something, and it starts with, we don't know who that person is, but Ilya Maza. three years and five years imprisonment respectively with hard labor. Yes, my Lord. Right. Then Marcos Maman. Yes, my that Lord. is the fifth accused. Yes, who, my Lord. who was sent? Yes, read that one. What what is done in respect of him? Uh, Marcus Malman. Yes, Marcus Malman, who spoke no English. Yes. Accused person was found guilty under head of charge one one. Sorry, charge of charge one. That is culpable homicide and sentenced to death by hanging. 
he was discharged and acquitted on head of charges two and three. That is unlawful assembly and rioting. Yes. Now, what is written opposite that in 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 the handwriting or biro? Is five years. Five years. Yes, my lord. Right. Then the next person, Yahaya Dunia. Dunia. Six accused, found guilty on two heads of charge. That is culpable homicide and sentenced to death by hanging. He was acquitted and discharged on charges of unlawful assembly, rioting and rioting with, while armed with deadly weapons under heads of charges two, three, and four. Yes, and what was written opposite? Five years. Five years. Yes, my lord. Right. Then the next person, Julius Serkis Amandebo, who is now late, seventh accused, found guilty of culpable homicide under head of charge one and sentenced to death by hanging. Yes, what is written opposite his name? Five years. Five years. Yes, my lord. So it does accuse that those persons, those figures were written in hand to, sh in hand to presumably uh, the, the decision. Anyway, you so and the Right. So at the end of the day, you obviously you are here. So you are not, the, the, you are not executed. In I thank God. Yeah, I thank yes. Okay. And the prayers of Nigerians. Yes. And, and none of those, and none of those uh, convicted with you was executed. No, my Lord. Now, those who have five years on this written in handwriting, biro. Yes, yes my Lord. Opposite. Their names. Their names. Um, what happened to them, and including yourself? Well, we, as we enumerated the charad between you and the Supreme Court, yes. we, we had to complete our sentences before no, no, we were what, released. What sentences? The Okadibo sentence for you was death. Yes, my And Lord. for these others was death. Yes. The, 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 so the, how, many, how much did you... What, what, oh, yes, we, were, we, become, were, we were imprisoned for 40 months. You were imprisoned for... For 40 months. 40 months. Yes, my Lord. That is uh, approximately calculation of the uh, prison authorities. Every 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 sentence here is eight months. I see. Yes. So, so that in effect for good behavior. Yes. So in effect, you all served five years. Yes, my lord. Uh, although you were discharged uh, with Within the 40 months. usual discount. Yes, my lord. I see. So this, in fact, this document represents. What happened? Yes, the, the decision, the extent to which that decision was of a category was confirmed and modified. Yes, my lord. Right, okay. Now, did you, nevertheless, did you, when after the sentence, did you file an application in the Supreme Court for an order to reverse the decision of the Okadigo Tribunal? Everything it did from the moment it was served with the motion for stay and the time it gave his judgment. We did, my lord. Right. Did the, did the, tribunal, did the court list your application? They didn't. No. When, and you look, that was in 1993. When eventually did this, was this application listed for hearing in the Supreme Court? Oh, uh, that was uh, 96. That's 1997. With 97. The, yes. 1997. So that application was not even heard like others until 1997. Correct. Now, when it, if it was eventually heard, uh, what transpired? Were you, were you present uh, at the Supreme Court of the day? Yes, my lord. Right. I was there with you and Colonel Ban Madaki. Yes. During the arguments, the Supreme Court said, asked for the copy of the proceedings, proceedings and judgment of the Okadibo Tribunal, which needed to be set aside. Correct, right. my lord. Right. Which we didn't have. Yes, we did not have it. Later, did uh, one of the, did we did uh, any evidence supplied to show that we had asked as far back as 1993? Yes, my lord. All copies of the correspondence with the honorary Anto uh, honourable Attorney General who promised to supply were given to them. Yes, okay. And it was added that 
these proceedings were deliberately denied us. Yes, okay. And they didn't consider that before right. they... No, no. Before the Supreme Court wrote, wrote its formal ruling, did you exhibit, did you do an affidavit showing the Supreme Court all the correspondence which showed that it was the government that refused to re uh, release those proceedings they were asking for? Yes, my lord. Right. Two days to the day, yes. I, I, I accompanied Colonel Madaki to the Supreme Court. Yes. And the registrar received us. He took the correspondence and uh, filed them. Yes, okay. So the motion which was filed to admit those affidavits in evidence, was it heard by the Supreme Court? It was not heard. Right. But nevertheless, the Supreme Court dismissed the application on the ground that the record of proceedings of a credible tribunal was not produced. Yes, my lord. Right. Has it been produced up till today? So no, my lord. lord. Right. I, with your permission, I want to add something. All right. Okay. I'm not, I'm not a lawyer, but something curious happened. Yes. 49 is a complete... Supreme Court record of what happened. Yes, that is so. Minus yes. Okadibo's. Uh, Minus Okadibo's yes. ruling, yes. yes. The judges that read the ruling were different from the judges who wrote them, ah, well, well, including the Honorable Chief Justice. Yes, okay. Right, okay. Well, that really doesn't matter so much from the point of view <laughs> in the law. I was curious. But, yes. But, um, yes, what they were saying on that day when we drew their attention to the motion which was pending for them to consider that affidavit. One minute more. Yes. So, now, so that is the, the position. And you're asking the, what are you asking the commission to do in respect of this, your conviction? My Lord, it's clear from the African Charter's ruling that we, we received a raw deal. Yes. Because of the image of this country, that African Charter's ruling must hold sway. Yeah. Right. Okay, let me cut you short now. It's been suggested here during the course of evidence by Lionel Council for the Hausa community yes, sir. that uh, the Major Kude should not be calling himself a major and yes. that he was a convict. And by implication that you yourself, the convict, you should not be calling yourself a, a, a general. Yes, sir. Now, what is the reality of the situation on the ground? What is the position of the army, the attitude of the army towards you and your status uh, have regard to documents in your possession? My Lord, as a retired senior professional, this is the authentic position. When a serving officer commit a serious crime. No, no, don't, 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 don't let's waste time on that. Okay. Have you received correspondence in the past, let's say, six months or so, from the army? Yes, my lord. Ad addressed to you. I have some letters here. Yes. One from the chief of army staff. Yes. Well, inviting me to uh, come and lecture it? students. Send, send uh, the documents. Another yes. from the chief of naval staff, chief of air staff, commandant of the Nigerian Defense Academy. Two letters. Commander of the Atelari Corps yes. and from two governors. Yes. The summary of those letters, they were doing, what were they doing there? They, 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 I was addressed by my full rank. Yes. You know, I, and I like to just... No, no, look, we have time now. Yes, sir. Please. Yes. We the two letters, one yes. is yes. 55, one yes. is yes. 56. Yes, sir. And in some of them, you are, you are invited to come and address... Officers. Officers of the army. Yes, my lord. They are preparing the Nigerian army for effective combat role. Yes. That means they have recognized my experience mm -hmm. and that which I can offer. Yes. And I just want to say that it is only officers that ha were cashiered mm -hmm. when they were in service that they are the rank. There is nothing I, I do not like. I don't like the guillotine to be applied on my neck. So I think his lordship is looking at his watch. So let us withdraw a few seconds before the hammer comes down. Yes, my lord. Right. We will present the rest. Whatever else you have to say, we will we'll send it in writing. Yes, Thank my you. lord. Uh, cross admission. Now, as lawyers, before we go, as uh, you made a point last time when you cross examined that there are Supreme Court records to show that this case has not been set aside, that Okadibo's uh, verdict by any court in Nigeria. It's on record, you said that. Yes, my lord. We agree with you. Will you now agree with us that take away sentiment? 
that trial is against all known norms of justice. That's a card book. We are not the Supreme Court. We can't set it aside. We cannot. We can only comment on what I, I hope my Lord, my one hour time is not running. No, before we go to okay. so that we have common ground. Okay. My Lord, the common issue of ground. the Okadibo panel. What happened in that case? No, my Lord. You have already established that the law as it is, that Okadibo thing has not been set aside. It's we more, agree with you. It's more than that, my Lord. My Lord, if my Lord wants me to address this commission on the position of the petitioner vis-a-vis -vis the decision of the Okadibo panel, I am prepared. But it will take, you, it will take me 15 minutes here, as I'm doing, I will do so. I say we, it's common ground, isn't it? It is common, common ground that they were convicted. 